Mm. It's another road name for it. And if I move into, say, for instance, hieroglyphics for a start, hieroglyphics back in the days of ancient Egypt, they were seen as talismans in that a particular hieroglyphic didn't mean like one letter, like a H. It meant a multitude of emotions. It meant a multitude of meanings. And it basically, you know, it drew in the powers of the stars. That's what a hieroglyph was. It was a talisman. Yeah. It wasn't a direct translation. So, like, for instance, when they do a direct translation of the Rosetta Stone, you can't translate hieroglyphics into H, A's, and Z's and stuff like that. Do you sure. know what I mean? Sure. Um, so, basically, if you think of this idea of hieroglyphics as talismans, um, power of the stars embedded in this, this symbol, um, if you want to call it that, mm. and then everyone assumes that the English language moved on from that and that our letters just meant letters, just to spell words out, and that there weren't symbols at all. But the fact is that if you look into the idea that the power control in Egypt never died out and they've been endemic to the power structure from the very start, mm -hmm. the letters on the English alphabet are just as much hieroglyphs as the hieroglyphics were, the talismans. I agree, so yeah, yeah. If you look at the letter A, for instance, you've got a pyramid with a capstone, a capital mm -hmm. letter A. Yeah. And then if you look at an S, you've got a snake. And then if you've got like a dollar sign, you've got a snake rising up what well, could be a kundalini or you know a DNA coil, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah. But basically, these 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 letters have got meanings behind them, and so this main road that cuts through the Olympics 2012 site, which is called the East Cross Road, is also known as the A12 Road. Hmm. Now, there's hundreds of A roads in Britain, and so what are the chances that of all the roads that cross through it were an A12 Road, hmm. a Pyramid 12 Road? <laughs> do, do you see where I'm coming from? With oh it? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very interesting. It's, um, it's pretty strange that that one road, you know, this is what I'm saying, coincidence is this load of rubbish that this is coincidence. It's yeah. not coincidence whatsoever. No. And then you look into the situation of where it's situated in London and eastern London, and you'll find that it's in two areas. It's separated between Leighton and Leightonstone. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if you're aware of what a ley line is, but of basically... Of course, yeah. Yeah. If you look into this, the Olympic site is bang on where two ley lines cross over. Hmm. So we're on about something that's connected to the energy grid of you know the world, like yeah. the the the, the, the lifeblood of the earth, if you want to call it that. <laughs> um, nice. Interestingly enough, before the, um, the when we commenced work on the Olympics 2012 site as well, I mean I got this information off the chap on a message board, but he basically said that they organised a massive rave on the Olympic 2012 site, uh -huh. in which um, no doubt there's a lot of government-sponsored drugs out there and a lot of energy being given off. Oh, and yeah. if you think about these energy lines, and they're inviting people to have raves on these sites, alongside holding some of the biggest like competitions in the world ever, mm. think about what's happening with all that energy. Oh, Where yeah, is that course. going? It's, it's probably being fed into the system somewhere. Mm. Um, and I think that's, that's, I mean, there's a lot of, um, you know, for instance, as far as UFOs are concerned and stuff like that, if you look into um, UFO sightings and stuff, a lot of them can be attributed to being near ley lines and stuff. Because obviously um, a UFO isn't necessarily something that's definitely fixed in our particular 3D world. Mm. Something that can be obviously of another dimension of sorts. Yeah. Um, but basically, like you've got this Zion street map that's fully biblical in every way, <laughs> and um, you then decide. Well, I decided to pick up the Bible. Um, I don't normally pick up the Bible. I'm not that type of person. But um, basically, picked up and uh, went to the Book of Mark, and I decided to go to the uh, chapter, well, chapter 11, verse 11, mm -hmm. you know, the old 11, 11. Yeah. We got this, uh, we got this passage here. Then Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple and looked around at everything. Since it was already late, he went out with his 12 disciples to Bethany. So we've got a mention of Jesus entering Jerusalem. Yeah. Which is obviously Zion's the new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And uh, it says that since it was already late, he went out with his 12 disciples to Bethany. Right next to the Olympics 2012 site, down a Roman road, is a place called Bethanal Green. Right next to the Olympics 2012 site, down a Roman road, is a place called Bethanal Green. Mm. Bethanal <laughs> Green, Bethany, sounds the same, pretty close, you know, not, not too far off. Yeah. Bethanal Green is 3.3 um, miles, 33, 33rd degrees, Masons and everything, 3.3 miles from Charing Cross, the centre of London. Yeah. So symbolic and, and numerology and everything that goes with it. Of course, I don't know if you've heard, but uh, if we look at the research of uh, Ralph Ellis, he talks that 
uh, Mary Magdalene might have been Mary of Bethany. You know, there's a whole connection between right. Beth, Bethany and the and the the you know the family of of Jesus, if you will, or you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I've, with the whole idea of the um, the Dan Brown bloodline and the Priory of Sion and stuff like that. Yeah. That's. Um, I mean, I'll get onto that shortly, but that's all part of the plan. That's mm-hmm. all part of what's intended here. They wanted to incite the public with the idea that there's a lost bloodline of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. Which is, uh, you know, pretty scary. <laughs> Stop it off. But on a on a uh, on a funny note, um, have you heard of EastEnders before? Uh, c- come the, again. Say it again. EastEnders, the English soap opera. No, I have not. No. Now, right, it's a it's a popular thing that most of the I'd say ninety percent of the population probably watch it. Unfortunately, really, it's uh, <laughs> those typical soap operas. And uh, oh. if you watch the intro sequence to that. Basically, behind the East Enders logo, where you know on this intro sequence, is the Olympics 2012 site. So basically, this thing that's making everyone forget about what's going on around them, that's distracting them, providing them with rubbish stories and terrible plot lines and everything, yeah. you know, stopping people from thinking, is symbolically showing this area on the TV screen every night of the week. Mm, interesting. Quite Very weird. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, now I can get onto. I think I've set a, a good. Standing for this whole idea of uh, Zion and this biblical uh, biblical event of sorts. Um, you, you know what? What I think we should do like this, Rick. Uh, I think that we yeah. should take a break right here, actually, because this has been uh, basically an hour-long preface here. And you know, obviously, I've got tons of questions and comments, but <laughs> of I, course, yeah. I, I definitely want to just let you kind of lay out what you you know what you have here, so to speak, and see where this leads us. So I'm going to ask you, Rick, to just basically continue on on the trail that you uh, ended in in our first segment if you will okay okay right well obviously we've um, laid out a ground plan with a street map of uh, you know the Zion Olympics in 2012 like biblical road names left right and center um, symbology and symbols and everything you know it's all over the place um, so I sat down and I started thinking to myself um, so what is going to happen obviously this is this is something that's uh, clearly been in the uh, the making for I mean, I'd presume that those roads have been particular, like named them roads for over a hundred years, because uh, the, the street street map hasn't changed in that time. Mm. Um, and so, what I uh, started looking into was um, the idea of the Trinity, because obviously the pyramid numerology and everything comes gets involved in all of this. Um, and you know, obviously, I think there's a there's a lot to be answered for in there. And so, obviously, the procession of the equinoxes is a 26,000 year cycle in which uh, a roughly 26,000 year cycle and mm-hmm. uh, takes just over 2,000 years to transition into a new age obviously 26,000 years through 12 signs of the zodiac and that's about 2,100 for a new age mm-hmm. and um, obviously in with the dawn of Christianity under Jesus we, um, we entered the age of Pisces which was symbolized by a fish um, and prior to that, under the age of uh, Aries, we were symbolically represented with Moses and his ram's horn. Mm, yeah. So you know, and we're, we're we're reportedly moving into the eleventh astrological sign of um, Aquarius, which is the water bearer. And so you start looking into religion for, as a whole, and you realise that every time that there's you know one of these kind of uh, you know transition of the ages, mm-hmm. if you want to call it that. Yeah. There's almost like a new trinity event, which um, which finds itself, you know, radically shaping the landscape. Mm. So, for instance, the the last trinity event we had essentially was the uh, Jesus, Joseph, and uh, Mary, who had been touched by the angel Gabriel um, trinity. And obviously, mm. in Christianity as a whole, you've got the Holy Trinity, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which mm. is symbolic again for the angel Gabriel. Hindu, we're, Hindu religion, we've got uh, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Mm. Um, the Jewish Trinity, which essentially not as personified, but was Moses, Ark of the Covenant, and the Temple, mm. and then obviously moving into the human body, we've got the spirit body and soul. You know, we've, we've got it all. But the fundamental Trinity of of the ages, like that started it all, was the Osiris, Isis, and Horus connection. Yeah. Obviously, Osiris and Isis, mother and father, giving birth to Horus, who was uh, essentially the personified, and he was the son. But um, so. Given that we've got this 1776 on the uh, on the um, gold, the, the the great seal on the dollar bill starting at 1776, we've got the um, Latin of Nuvus Ordo Seclarum, and it's literally Latin for New Order of the Ages. 
Mm. So it's not New World Order, it's what it's New World Order of the ages. So it's yeah. obviously insinuating that it's to do with the transition of the equinox, like, of, you know, of the ages moving into the sign of Aquarius. Mm. 